<laughs> Hi guys, so Mark ousted me out of his last video and you know what, I did record one by myself and then I thought I just missed him and I just wanted him to be in my video so I thought no, I want to re-record it with him in the video because he adds a little flavor aver to it. Well that's that's the story we're going to go with. Because I was too insecure to post a video by myself, that's the real story. <laughs> So your video looks great, and mine, mm, I'm not so sure. Actually, Bethel, you come from an acting background. I know, right? Got a master's in drama. Come on. Like, yeah, but I feel confident because you're next to me in this. Anywho, whatever. That's my story, love. Like I need it. him. <laughs> these are the five things that I learned about in pregnancy. Guys, I learned loads in pregnancy, but these are the five that kind of stood out for me. So the first one was, OMG, needing to pee all the time. Like all the time. <laughs> and he's doing that because this is one time we traveled to America, right? Hmm. No, that was the worst ever. So, no, let me tell the story because we saved up for a good, you know, whatever it was, two years so we could go on this trip. It was meant to be like one of those pilgrimage, you know, to the States. And we were going to do this tour, you know, all around the States, like a road trip type thing. It was amazing. You know? Look at some pictures. Anyway, from this. anyway. Just from this. So we'd started about New York and we'd heard about Central Park and you see it in the movies and stuff like that, you see it on the news and you think, actually, do you know what, I'm really going to go to Central Park. It's going to be you know, we're going to have this romantic walk in Central Park and we're going to take lots of pictures. And so we went to Central Park <laughs> and all I remember was Bethel needing to use the toilet every two minutes. <laughs> the worst thing and was... And the worst thing was oh. in the middle of... Winter, winter. Oh and New gosh. York. For those of you that oh know, it's the warmest place in the country. It was freezing. No, it was it's freezing. super freezing. <laughs> That's the first time I saw Mark like getting mad. Like he was actually getting. No, I was mad. so frustrated. I was really trying hard to. <laughs> he was because normally I'm like a gondola. You know, yeah, but... he was trying so hard, but the problem was, it's like I was thirsty because I was pregnant and we were walking, so I needed to hydrate. But the more I hydrated, the more I needed the toilet. And then, of course, because we were in a place we didn't know, I didn't know where the toilets were. Yeah. So it was like find a, find a restaurant or find something on Google. And you're in Central Park, you don't know where the toilets are. It's freezing cold. Oh my gosh! It, was, it, was it, it probably was about crazy. minus something. I don't know what it was, but you know, and we weren't fully prepared for that winter anyway. We were we, we were looking to go to Phoenix, which yeah. is much warmer. warmer. It's a desert. Yeah. Anyway, guys, needing to pee is a thing in pregnancy. You just need to pee all the time, guys. I don't know whether it's every woman or it was just... Well, the, the fact is that you've got more relaxing in your body. Oh, yeah, and true. as your stomach fact. grows, it's pressing against your bladder. It's so massaging. it's like you can't really... Caressing your bladder. And your bladder's like, yes, <laughs> take me to the loo. Please. Constantly take me to the loo. I was actually like, I thought about this great idea for this app. Like, where's the nearest toilet? Do you remember when we were in Washington, oh, yeah, D.C.? I was like, okay. okay, we were actually calculating our routes to say, okay, we need to go here, and then next we need to go here because there's a toilet there. And we can have a <laughs> Imagine planning your holiday based on where the toilet is. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking the app could be called something like Relieved. Yeah, that's really good, guys. Okay, we're just out in ourselves. So I'm just going to take this and make the app and then become a millionaire. Anyway, just yeah. thank us for it, okay, guys? We Intellect want royalty. Intellectual property. We want royalty. But anyway, moving on. Next thing, number two, was morning sickness. Okay, guys, morning sickness is a real thing. I was actually trying to remember, did you ever? No, I oh, didn't. Yeah. Well, I had the sickness part, so I was really sick and like, oh, I can't stand. I want to just lie down and sleep. Remember, I slept all the time. Oh, yeah. That's right? True. That was my morning sickness. Like, I that's can't true. get up. I just want to sleep. It was like living, so with, a, it was like, it was like living with a sloth. Literally. I had to work, so I'd get up, go oh, wait, to work. Wait, is it a sloth or a koala that <laughs> sleeps all the time? I think they both do anyway. They so. both do. Get up, go to work, literally on my breaks, guys. I would either go to the car or I'd go to the toilet, well, like was, somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and just catch some Z's, yeah. like, and then <laughs> literally come back to work and finish what I was doing. As soon as I get home, Mark was such a good husband. Like, he'd literally have food ready for me. Well, he still is a good husband. But true. He'd have food ready for me. I'd literally scoff my food and literally go into bed and sleep till the next morning. That's how tired I was. It was literally, so literally, <laughs> everything was literally amazing. Yeah. But morning sickness, I actually prayed to God and asked him not to vomit because I hate vomiting. Because when I was a child, I had dysentery and I was vomiting and diarrhea and everything. I was in hospital. It was the worst experience of my life. And I just said, God, please. Wait, how, how old were you? Probably about... 10-ish, 9, 10 around there, so I can remember it vividly. 
It was the worst. I was just thinking it's nasty because you weren't wearing any diapers or anything. No, I had to so. wear a diaper. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. So that, even that would have been, like, even that yeah. been nasty. Cause, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. I just, I just visualised that. Anyway, it was so bad I was hospitalised, guys. And I was just praying. Well, I was like, God, please, anything but vomiting. I only vomited once during my kiss pregnancy. And I remember being like, no, we had a covenant. What is this? <laughs> and Mark was like, come on, you vomited. It's normal. Like, whatever. And with Raya, I vomited once as well. And that oh, was right. actually when I was delivering. Do you remember? In labour. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In labour. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh. And then luckily the, la the, the nurse was like, there you go. The midwife, she was like, there you go. And then like, in time. And then like carrots in my nose though. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I'm trying to remember whether that was a sandwich or something oh, that you had before. Oh, it was the dinner from the night before. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was nasty. Well, anyway. Next one, number three, was pelvic girdle pain. Now, I learned about this four weeks into, or five weeks into my pregnancy with Micah Seth, and it was horrendous. I could EGP. not walk. I could not do anything, guys. Pelvic girdle pain is real. But in my second pregnancy... <laughs> Yeah, literally. It's because when you have relaxed and your pelvis kind of shifts. It does. So instead of it being in its right place, it goes like this or like this or like that. And so imagine trying to walk on like a pelvis that's like that. Mm -mm. So NHS unfortunately did not help in my first pregnancy. They kept saying to me, oh, do these exercises. Those exercises were making it worse because if you're doing exercises with a pelvis that's already out of whack, it's not helping anything. You need to get your pelvis back into where it needs to be. So actually, second pregnancy round, I learned about a chiropractor, guys. I went to a chiropractor and that stuff sorted it out. So I kept going <laughs> all throughout my pregnancy, even three days before I delivered, or two days before I delivered, oh, I yeah. went to the chiropractor so my pelvis was nicely intact. I think, I think what was hilarious <laughs> is Bethel would go in one way, like literally waddling, waddling and come out the other way like, doo -doo -doo, walking perfectly normal. <laughs> and it was just like, what on earth is going on in there? <laughs> Number four, guys, was diet and exercise. The importance of eating well. In Micah's pregnancy, I ate like anything I wanted. I put on tons and tons of weight. And like we said, we went to the States, and so you can only imagine what happened. I put on 10 kilos in the States alone. And, and that was in a period a of month. three weeks. Yeah, about a month. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then when we came back, it was just spiraling. So I just kept eating worse and worse and worse and worse. I felt bleh. Well, I think the way we, we put it into context was that you were feeding the baby. Micah was just one of those babies who liked, liked, loves his food and so Bethel needed to feed the baby. <laughs> Anywho guys, that I learned in Rhea's pregnancy, eating well actually gives you more energy. So mm -hmm. I had gestational diabetes, which we'll talk about in a different video, but it meant that I had to have an extremely strict diet and that gave me more energy than I ever expected. Absolutely. It also meant that I didn't put on excess weight and so actually after delivery, Wow, I'm already very close to my pre-birth I think I remember people weight. saying after delivery that, wow, Beth, you're glowing. Yeah, like, wow, what's happened? You don't look like somebody who's given birth. That's because I ate yeah, extremely true. well during my pregnancy because I had to do it, guys. Mm -hmm. And number five, which is probably the most important thing I learned in pregnancy, was to love myself. Mm. As myself, for everything that I am and whatever I looked like. Mm. Because in my cassette's pregnancy, I think I went from 75 kilos to 106 kilos. So I think to put it to perspective, I, I recall there was one time we were driving with Bethel and we were going somewhere and I meant to turn left. So obviously in the UK, your passenger sits on the left side. And so as I went to glance to see if there was any oncoming traffic, I actually noticed for a second, I, I, you know, I, I, I had to kind of just whoa, because it so happened that Bethel had taken the entire window and her silhouette was literally all of the window. And so I went, he actually, whoa. He actually did that. He actually went, whoa. I was like, <laughs> wow. Um, sorry, can I just check for the traffic? <laughs> Drive, but that was so vivid. <gasps> no, guys, I was big with my cassette. I was big. And no, part of it was I had gestational diabetes. I was blown up. He was pretty big, but I was big. And part of it I mean, was that's the not the point that, anyway. I know we say that yeah, joke, but that's I, not the point. Yeah. It, it was just a fact of, you know. Yeah. I learned that when I was in that state, especially after I'd given birth and I had all the stretch marks mm, from birth mm. and all that kind of stuff, Prior to having children, I was very much into exercise. I'm, I still am, but I was fit. You know, I did insanity. You know, I, I've done a half a marathon. I'm very, very much into my fitness, guys. But I think the most important thing about you loving yourself is that you've just delivered a baby. Exactly. And, you know, you're at that time, you were actually looking after my cassette, which mm -hmm. means you were primary carer mm -hmm. and you were doing your best to ensure that he was developing and growing in the right kind of way. And so yeah. as a mum, 
It's okay. Just appreciate it. Yeah, and I don't know who bought it for me. I don't know if it was you, but somebody bought me this magazine with the Mutu Method on it and um, introduced me to the Mutu Method. Which might have been me. I yeah, know. I don't know. Somebody bought it for me. I'm take the glory. <laughs> um, and I started learning about uh, the Mutu Method. Yeah. Um, I'll put the link in the bio. Amazing, amazing exercises for women who have delivered or who are pregnant. Mm -hmm. Literally, just the ethos of actually loving yourself for yeah. everything, for the stretch marks, for all Absolutely. that, and starting to Absolutely. speak positively to your body and to yourself. That changed my that changed my whole perspective mm. of me because I used to think that I was fat guys when I was like a size eight. I remember those. Days. I feel like I had body dysmorphia or something like that. I used to be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I need to lose weight. This, this, this. Uh. But guys, after having a baby and getting to that size, that is when I started loving myself and I was like, no, my body is a machine. My body has created a whole human being. Oh my gosh, how amazing is that? But I think the other thing about loving yourself was how you had to ensure that your mindset was in mm. the right place. And that's what that part was about because you yeah. had to make sure Refiguring, how you were thinking about yourself, how your self-image and what you were thinking about yourself exactly. was in the right place so you could be the right kind of person who's present for my set as a mum. Exactly. So guys, thank you so much for listening to those five things. Comment below if you learned some things in pregnancy. Looking forward to the next video where we're going to talk to you about how we got a girl and a boy.